Okay, it's day 47, and the first true leaf of this oldest plant is about the same size. Uh, the second true leaf has actually grown, so now actually you can see some growth in there. It's taken on the characteristic, you know, heart or spade shape. It's an interesting case, you know, the stem is curled, it's been inverted, but it, it has a very good chance of making a recovery. It has a root ball that's extending out, you know, six different lateral roots, kind of like a starfish and they're just finding their way into the soil and I've been spraying water almost every day so um, I think it's been getting enough moisture to do that and survive if I hadn't been watering every day it probably would have died uh, this inverted plant is a curious case as you can see uh, this was once its root and that dried out in the air because it was exposed to the air and no amount of watering could save that so it's threadbare it's non-functioning at this point but as you can see over here, I see the signs of a little bit of differentiation. I think that's trying to turn into a root. And you know, there are some bumps around here, so I think it might try to extend some roots out and find its way downwards to get some water. And another curiosity is these two green bumps over here. So I have no idea what that's about. Um, it might be you know some other plant root is uh, trying to or an inverted seed is trying to find its way out by generating you know um, shoot apical meristem at some other spot here's another angle for that inverted plant you know that's uh, another root coming out of this root ball that's found its way into the soil you know this long one that's another one and of course on the other side you have what I already showed you you know, so there's at least three that have found their way into the soil. And here's one of the seedlings that's very healthy. Uh, you know, you can see that organic kickstand, so to speak. Uh, you know, that thing. That's what I've been referring to. And, you know, even though the main roots found its way into the soil and established itself long ago, there are these uh, secondary roots that are also doing the same thing. And here's another example of that. Here's another curious situation. I see what seems like a little root and uh, I think that large seed that we're looking at is germinating and it's on top of another seed that may or may not be doing something. Here's another curiosity. Uh, it seems to be a somewhat you know, submerged seed and it has something coming out of it um, Yeah, that could grow into a plant, I'm not sure. Another miraculous thing is there's been no new mold growth and you know before I had only the LED lamp shining on these plants and the soil and there was almost molting every day. I haven't had to do any mold cleanup operations. There are several explanations but I think the Lysol itself couldn't hold the mold at bay for more than a day or two. But I think with very intense natural sunlight hitting this for only an hour and a half every day that's enough to you know inhibit mold growth so there must be something about these indoor garden variety molds that you know they just get signals to stop growing if there's intense sunlight so just to reiterate I mean there's some rotting stuff here and the seed in the middle um, that could be rotting but you know there's a definitely a dead plant over here on where I'm centered now so um, yeah you don't see mold filaments coming out and that could be because I'm not watering like crazy these days. I'm only kind of spraying the surface, but you know that keeping the surface continuously damp that should enable mold growth. But no mold filaments have showed up. And as you know, I have a large pane of glass uh, separating the sun and this pot, so it's not the UV light because very little UV reaches through the glass, um, at least for only 90 minutes a day. But um, it could also be that just that tiny amount of UV could stop mold from growing. But so far, I think it's just the sheer intensity of the sun and maybe the heat that comes along with it. It's day 48, and as you can see, there are huge differences between today and yesterday. So this seedling is uh, still here. It's kind of grinding away, and it's making progress on its second true leaf. And there are four seedlings that are doing very, very well. This was the one that I kind of described, um, actually it was this, that, uh, you know, its cotyledons were open in the very beginning. 
and I thought that would be the most successful plant but here we have another one and this one that have completely broken free from their seedlings and the cotyledons have just burst open they're a lush green now and they're doing great and I expect this one to do the same very very soon so you can see the seed is still there just kind of flick it it'll fall off so I think by now it's clear that getting rid of the seed husks is not a problem due to anything else. It's not due to mold, it's not due to Lysol, it's not due to these being some genetically engineered strain that doesn't do well on its own without supervision. You know, it's really just you need some natural sunlight and probably the warmth that it brings, not even the UV in that light to have the plants grow fast enough to break free. The other thing that you'll notice is strong phototropism of all of the new seedlings towards this lamp. Now that's very interesting because it lends me to believe that phototropism could be based just on the time and the direction of the light source. So the light source is here and it's on for, you know, usually I would say 16 hours. Anyway, um, if the light is coming from this direction, why would the seedlings all be going towards the LED light even though you know, the LED light is probably only 5 to 10% as intense as the natural sunlight that comes in for that hour and a half every day. Well, I think the reason is um, this lamp is on for 16 hours a day. So these cells, uh, for example, this seedling, as I illustrated before, the cells on this side of the stem will grow faster. So that will make the plant curve towards this direction, towards the light. And these cells... Um, to, on the stem near the direction of the light towards the direction of the light they'll grow slower so that's how a plant constantly adapts to face the sunlight so that's very interesting as well um, I didn't expect that I thought just because the sunlight was more intense it all be you know facing that way and upwards so that's very interesting so previously I was talking about what are these green dots you know I thought those were you know, it was too good to be true. I thought those were sort of adventitious shoots coming out of the roots of some existing plants. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. You know, why would these reproduce vegetatively when they're just seedlings? So it turns out that's not what that is. Uh, I think it's some form of algae. So instead of mold, we're getting algae. Or, you know, I don't know what that is. Is it moss? You know, I'm pretty sure it's algae and it's growing on these little white pebbles that kind of come in with your garden variety topsoil that you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or any big box store like that. Algae is a very welcome substitution for mold. You know, nobody likes mold. I don't like mold. It grows on everything inside a house, it, provided there's enough water. Anything that sort of has an organic surface, it will wreck. And it's harmful for your health and you know it causes things to rot that's what it does it decomposes I'm not saying there's no more mold in this pot for example if you were to focus on here you know it's kinda hard to see without the light but let me try turning it off yeah so that's moldy and I'm gonna treat that with a little bit of Lysol afterwards but I'd rather have algae any day algae is relatively harmless so that's a very welcome change and that too was brought about by the sunlight so algae requires a lot of sunlight thrives in the sunlight provided there's water uh, mold is the opposite it seems to have died down or been held back just by the very presence of light and not necessarily the warmth it brings you know I'm sure mold can grow in warm moist conditions that are dark so here's another interesting development there's a seedling that just seemingly came out of nowhere on the very other side of the pot it's right against the glass wall so we can kinda of see its root system developing and the shoot system is nice and fat and it's ready to sprout up so we can be expecting cotyledons within a few days this plant seems to be doomed you know it would take a lot of water spraying and a lot of root extensions to kinda of get to where it needs to go although it does have that connection that's not completely threadbare yet um, it does have somewhat of a root system, but I'm not sure if it's functioning. It's, it's still pretty thin. From the 48 days thus far, based on what we've seen, I think it's fair to assume and conclude that Lysol does not inhibit the development of these plants in any way. 
it doesn't seem to affect seed germination or the growth of seedlings and it does a great job at inhibiting mold although although ultimately it just requires intense light and I believe if there were a 100 watt LED lamp that were 20 times as powerful as this 5 watt lamp you know that would get the trick done and that would eliminate the need for natural light although do you really want a 100 watt bulb running all day okay it's day 49 and as you can see there are four large seedlings um, they've kind of supplanted or uprooted the stage of the very first plant that survived um, when all others died which is here and it's doing quite well in its own right and you can see a second true leaf coming along nicely it's a nice little spade but these four seedlings have created their own canopy. They're very tall and have lush green cotyledons. And they're also developing shoot apical marrow stems that are visible and are well on their way to making their first true leaves. So for this particular seedling, you know, the angle at which it's uh, responded to with phototropism towards the LED light is around 40 degrees away from the soil. It's very angular and it can do this because it has a good root system anchoring it. As you can see here, there are several roots on this side of the bowl that weren't there before. So this inverted plant is basically a goner. If you look over here, so is this one. Uh, there's more algal development. Okay, it's day 49 and a half, and as I was spraying water on these plants, I noticed some sort of what looks to be a white fly on one of the plants. So I'm not sure if this is the start of an infestation, but I'll definitely kill them with Lysol if I can. Okay, it's day 50 and not much has changed. There are um, a number of seedlings, four with giant cotyledons. Here's the earliest one to develop. It had no problems getting its seed husk off, but it didn't grow as tall as the other ones. It has a first true leaf and it's coming along nicely. So the development timetable is very accelerated compared to say uh, this plant which is the original survivor but this plant is also making a significant you know progress it has a very woody stem now and it has a fully developing uh, first true leaf and a developing second true leaf as well as a shoot apical marrow stem that's working on another true leaf here's a close-up of the tallest seedling this one appears to be the most robust. It had the most tilt due to phototropism towards the LED light. And maybe some of that has to do with the fact that it occupies uh, a large swath of area and has a monopoly over a lot of that soil to itself. So perhaps it has a root system that just faces very little competition. Here's the seedling that's growing on the side of the bowl that I talked about earlier. It has a root system that's developing it looks like one of those stick figure Sonoran Desert, you know, rock art drawings by one of those uh, ancient Native American tribes.